A normal aorta is about that big around, about two and a half centimeters. About, the, I tell, like I tell patients often, it's like the size of the drain pipe under your sink. And it is under more stress than any other organ in your body. It deals with the stress from ejection of blood flow from your heart all day long, every single second of every single day for your entire life. But in some people, that stress causes this slow degenerative process in the aorta that ultimately can lead to an aneurysm, which is when the aorta enlarges. And then in some people, that kind of continuous beating that the aorta takes causes it to degenerate in such a way that it rips apart, what we call an aortic dissection. The definition of aneurysm is a very loose one, but generally we nowadays talk about an aneurysm being 1.5 times the normal size. There's also a difference in, in why aneurysms occur in various areas. So in the aortic root, about half of those patients have what we call a connective tissue disorder. Then you have the patients who've got abnormal valves that they were born with, two leaflet valves, bicuspid valves. Aneurysms in the ascending aorta typically are associated with bicuspid valves. In the aortic arch, we do see isolated aneurysms, but less so. They're usually associated with smokers or people who've got poor health and they get an infection in the descending aorta. Those aneurysms are fairly similar. And then the abdominal aorta, that's typically in heavy smokers beyond the age of 60, 65, and particularly men. Usually there aren't symptoms to give you a warning. There are symptoms when things are really bad. So most of the times people are fortunate to have these found when we're looking for something else. The strongest tool that we use to help guide us in the decision making about when to operate is based on the imaging of the aorta. So we look at the size and then we go ahead and put a plan in place to track it and manage it as needed. If it's involving the upstream portion of the aorta, that is the root of the aorta, right where it originates from the heart, or the ascending aorta, or the arch of the aorta, all segments of the aorta in the front of the chest, it's typically approached through an incision in the front of the chest. And it's an open heart surgery kind of approach. For a straightforward aneurysm, we transect. So we cut it out and you splice in a new piece of tubing. I mean, that's essentially what we do. Now we use Dacron or polyester material, and it's a tube and it's got a coating on it so it doesn't leak, and we then sew it into position. It gets more complicated when there are blood vessels coming off the aneurysm and you've got to then re-implant those blood vessels because you've got to continue to provide blood flow to the intestines or the brain or arms or the spinal cord. And then if it's aortic root, we have to hook up the coronary arteries and then we want to keep the aortic valve at the same time and repair it and preserve it for patients, especially young patients. The aortic root is the shortest segment of the aorta, but also the most complex. So it starts right within the ventricle of the heart. So when the heart beats, that aortic valve opens. When the heart fills, it closes, but it's suspended inside the walls of the aortic root. And so when there's a problem with the aortic root, there can be a problem with the aortic valve because the root and the valve are all one thing. If you have a disease process involving the root or even a very leaky aortic valve, we have to consider all of those components in our decisions about how to repair it or how to replace it and how to take care of it safely. We try very hard in young people to keep the valves, especially if it's a leaking valve. We have shown that we have really good results both for bicuspid valves and the three leaflet valves as far as repairing the valve and keeping them, including using the root procedure. The importance of that is if you've got good reliability of the operation, and we've shown that that is the case, then you can keep your own valve and you don't have to be on Coumadin, in the blood thinner and you don't have to have a mechanical valve. And uh, in our hands, it's turned out to be a very safe operation. For the aorta and the downstream aorta in the back of the chest, more often than not, we're able to address that with a least invasive approach, where we make a little puncture or maybe even a little incision in the groin, and we can repair that segment of the aorta with what we call an endovascular device, which means inside the vessel. We use what we call a stent graft so that piece of hose has stents attached to it. 
and it's with the stents that we allow that device to be fixed in place. Why and how we choose one treatment over the other, again, depends on the location of the aneurysm, the extent of the aneurysm, and other features. Always at the top of our decision-making priorities is safety. Our experience is huge, and we've got surgeons that covers every area of complex cardiac surgery, and we have people who love doing particular operations, and our results are, are superb. Thank you.